No, you're right. But we do need to combat that popular legitimacy by spreading the message that anarchy is viable. not a completely exactly viable. Couldn't have said it better myself. Someone's it's here. a realistic oh, alternative. I just saw someone just stroll through the back. Well, let's take a selfie on camera. I didn't do it. Oh, Jeff, you gotta come back. You guys are someone here? not drunk people. There is. Who's here? Including you, Mark, starting with you, how many people see the government as an enemy of the people? Me. Absolutely. Starting with well, Mark. we all do. I, I think I'm an enemy is a little bit strong word. Stronger what word would you use? Like a hindrance? Uh, abusive uh, relationship? It's not abuse of power. Slave master? I definitely would say enemy. If it's full on enemy. Mark. So, smart, right? The government as if All the other words used are also power. appropriate. So, the government by definition. You're already giving a moment that I have in my hand. Right. Hey, 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 guys, guys. No, wait, wait, no, wait, no. No, me and this guy are no. rich friends. We have a connection that's no. beyond you. No. <laughs> no. James, listen. <laughs> James, listen. No, no, lost listen. Lost listen. No, 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 listen. No, listen to what Mike has to say because it's part of the conversation. Yeah, I'm sure okay. No, there's a bit of, there was a Pew poll that said 37% of Americans. Whatever. 27% of Americans believe that the. It's, it's actually of voters. So the number could actually be higher. 27% of voters higher. believe. believe that the government is the enemy of the people. This is I a pew totally poll. Totally agree with them. I'm sad to hear that which, it's not higher than that. Yeah, which faith but this is voters. Is, this is well, that's yeah, such as yourself. So I'm not a statist. I'm absolutely an anarchist. But think I'm about oh, what determines yeah. that number. Whoa. It's the number of Whoa. anarchists Whoa. that Whoa. still Whoa. vote. No, I'm not. That oh, is that's that's exactly what that you number think about is. It like that, that. It's is, the number uh, of anarchists who still vote. They see the government as the point. enemy of the people, but yet they still vote. Twenty-seven percent of the it's people vote to do both. Who vote. That's see the, the people. Point. See the government as the enemy of the people. That is an important that's demographic that people that's like us need to engage yes. through this no. type of uh, no, engaging yes. media. Those are exactly <laughs> the people that we harvest hey. when we yes. work for Rand Paul. No way. The look, Matrix. And we harvest look, the people. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. And Rand said yes. Let Fuck me be a Rand. cult. But I'm no. the cult that's she going to brainwash you into you thinking for yourself. That's no, what the church the hand, invisible hand is. It's the cult that's go, that will brainwash you into thinking for yourself. You have uh, See, that's a topic. By telling you that about. thinking for no, yourself no, no, is no, a no, good no, idea. No, 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 remember at the start of the show when I said, what have you done? Let, let Mark talk. You, no, let me tell Mark something. No, okay. let Mark that's say something. Mark said talk about no, being brainwashed. Let him finish that. Because it's not more than being drunk, although I'm drunk at the And he knows what it's like. You drink too much, and it you was just drink beer. Too much. I've seen you drink a whole fifth of liquor before. Now yeah, but. Stuck. Rory, Rory Becker. Becker. Rory Becker. The spot, unofficial sponsor of tonight's episode. Rory Blame Becker. James for your reputation. If you're an anarchist and you don't drink, there. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. If you don't need to prove yeah, then you're not a real anarchist. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> we, are, we are like 24 minutes into this recording. And got zero. <laughs> no, we, got, we got lots of clips. Hey, Mark, sit over here, buddy. All right, awful. quick. We got to talk about something intelligent. Oh, <laughs> talk about the Libertarian Party. All right, all right, all right. I'm trying Congress to get a thing. straight... Face here. No, we, we have a, a good friend of mine, Mark. I'm the vice chairman of the Libertarian Party of Michigan. I'm the second in command. Yep. Really? The second in command. Well, I'll be higher you higher you of somewhere. Or at least Rod. Probably here. Rod. In what district? I am running for U.S. Congress in Michigan's 8th district. 
Or is that 8th District? Yeah. That's all of Ingham and Livingston counties in the northern half of Oakland County. See, you got a right. lot of rich people probably up there. You have to appeal to them. Well, we got both. We got a uh, mix of uh, rich and uh, more down to earth people. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of rural territory. <laughs> more down to earth people. Like but are they primarily Republicans? If you uh, look probably. at the Livingston, growing. where I'm from, is primarily Republican. Uh, Ingham, not so much. The northern half of Oakland is also strongly Republican, though. So I think overall, uh, Mike Bishop, the Republican incumbent, has a pretty good chance of winning the race. But uh, who's, who's, is that the for your district? Bishop? Correct. That's good correct. To point. He's the current one. Uh, yeah, he's running against. Uh, well, he she can appeal to some of the libertarian views that might appeal to people. Yeah. Express them. Yeah, he's running against Melissa Gilbert. She's running for the Democratic nomination. Is she the actress? The actress. You got really? it right. Yeah, from a Little she House on the Prairie. She could win. She's not going to win. No. Uh, she's Mike Bishop's probably going to win. She's going to get second place. And I'm going to get what third. What is she running for? Eight District Congress. Is she but, a libertarian? Are you going to get more? No, she's Democrat. Oh, I'm, I'm a libertarian. So I want to do like a hard turn and completely... Hard to change the subject. I'm with you. Extreme. Let's take yeah. it that way. Not even we're, we're not even doing a segue. <clears throat> we're like hitting the wall Go. and doing another topic. We just Ducks. we just no. We still have <laughs> here. Um, we just came out of um, the holiday season. And well holiday season is still among us because we, we just came, oh. came out of Christmas. Christmas was yesterday. Christmas was yesterday. And Lots of us anarchists left our anarchist circle for a day and went and hung out with groups of people that we'd only see like once or twice a year. Our families. Our families. What so, families? No, I see my family a lot more often than that. I, I see my family. family. I'm talking about like your extended families, you know, your bigger family, not the ones you see all the time, but you know, people come for miles around and get together. I'm sure, did that happen for you, Danny? Did you hang out with some people? I hung out with my mom and my aunt. Okay, so your aunt. Um, did you hung out with people? Yeah. Right? I hung out with extended family. That you don't normally okay. see. So how did these conversations go? Did anybody bring up any anarchical topics? Did you um, Yeah, I want to know what, what your family thinks yeah, about it. What, what well, I approached on a, a subject a little bit with my uh, cousin. I just... I didn't go full blown anarchist, but I told him, you know, I've become way more anti government in the last few years, and I was already very anti government. I've been pretty much a libertarian for 20 some years, and uh, so he seemed pretty amenable. He owns a business, and uh, he seemed. But what up. points were attractive to him? Like, if you said, government shouldn't tell us we can't smoke weed. Something like that. People might be attracted to that. He, Hell yeah. He doesn't smoke weed. Hell I don't yeah. think he would care. <laughs> I totally but what topics that, would appeal to him? <laughs> hey, 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 you gotta run. <laughs> you hey, gotta, uh, you gotta, what, what could we say to you, Mark, that would... Uh, I say more... Oh, hands you're kind of like things, our extended family. Things like drugs, things people have been getting locked up for, for, you know, longer than real criminals. Especially so soft drugs, they could have this thing of soft drugs like marijuana and a thing of hard drugs like cocaine and heroin like they do in Europe. Do you think they should lock people up for victim <laughs> crimes? Yeah, why is it do you think the hard drugs are still a danger in the community? I mean, is it something that people are doing voluntarily? Well, that's a subject that I'm probably really on your side with more than anything else is Legalizing drugs, pretty much letting people use exactly. what they want to use because they're going to do it anyway. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've seen heroin destroy the lives of close personal friends of mine. Why do you care? I do care because, I, like I said, it, I've seen it. Should our government be protecting us from stuff like but that? You no, that that's one. the answer. No, the government is not. It's not the purpose of government to protect us from our own bad choices. Well, let me ask then. When other people aren't in danger. That's too loud. What the f oh, oh, I crashed. So, what happened? It's not the government's, um, you know, purpose to protect us from our own bad choices, even when other people are in danger. Well, I think drunk driving is a different subject. I, protecting I mean, yourself is, is your own responsibility. Overall. But when you put other people at harm, I think government does have to protect. Well, when you cause other drivers harm, from drunk driving. No, when you're when you cause harm, I think you're right. But when you if you take, don't get caught, it's okay. Exactly. 
Exactly. Well, it's well, not even if you don't get caught. If you don't actually cause an accident, then you haven't actually caused any harm. Are we talk about how drunk driving isn't a crime? Yes, that is what we're talking about. Thanks for joining us again, James. James, don't you need a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> No, well, that's the part that may be hard to sell to people. When it comes I to criminal, criminal activities, you're going to still need some type of law enforcement. Well, the problem is, I do, and I know libertarians I agree with law enforcement. I do think law enforcement. You need law enforcement. No, yeah. no, no, no. Let no, me no, ask, no. what do you no. define as crime? If you haven't actually caused any harm to anybody, it's a victimless crime. Right, exactly. If the coke addict snorts coke, is it a crime? Exactly. I don't think now, it should be. No. If okay, it, if so it should be. Is it? No. It if, is in our current system. If you but drive home, if you drive home drunk right now, is it a crime or is it a crime if you drive home drunk and run somebody over and kill them? I guess it's only a crime if you kill them. But Some what people what is can it? drive oh, drunk uh, really well. But no, 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 no. But let me ask you: Is, <laughs> is, is it <laughs> honestly? No, we got to be careful here oh, because <laughs> intention. I, I'm not very much into intention, but uh, intention, I think, does kind of matter. If I run someone over because I'm hammered, because I'm just reckless, I have no desire I have no desire to kill that person, but just because I did. It's you're, what's called a mitigating circumstance. Your decisions. I don't know if it's a mitigating. I think it's, it's a reckless. Oh, yeah, no, an aggravating, aggravating circumstance. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. It, it, it's... If you actually cause harm to someone and you're drunk at the time, then you should get a harsher punishment because you were reckless in getting drunk and getting behind the wheel. But if you don't actually cause harm to anybody, then it's a victimless crime. crime. Or, and it shouldn't be... Well, or, if you don't get caught, you, you won't get punished. But if you do get caught, someone gets killed, there's got to be some strict Then, you exactly, you should get a harsher punishment than someone who caused a similar accident but, but was so... Why well should you get any... Punishment if you no. really did not intend to hurt anyone. Because it, intention well, is punishment. Uh, I mean, the road to hell is paved with best intention. Are you talking punishment. about punishment or are you talking about um, you know compensation? So say no, if, if, if you drive no well Both, just say probably. if you drive home right now and you're not drunk and it's raining and you get distracted by something and you run somebody over and kill them, I think that you have a you have well, I think a you obligation. Should to their family, or, or if they don't get killed, if they get hurt, you have an obligation to, you know, to, to pay for their hospital bills or whatever. I don't disagree with that. That's, I, 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 that's, that's going to be in God. I also think that you also uh, accrue uh, additional punitive damages uh, just for the reckless behavior of not, not to... Uh, exactly, know, that's what I'm saying. Is, um, well, yeah, there, there's one thing where is if, you know, Something distracted you that wasn't necessarily your fault, or if you were hammered and yeah, either that way. you were distracted by being hammered. So I would say that being drunk would be a, a mitigating or aggravating, aggravating circumstance that would make that. So where that I was trying to go with this topic was not to debate the, the actual the issues. I was talking which. about. What did you, what were your interactions like with your family? And actually, I flew this drone in here for a purpose. <laughs> it wasn't just to be stupid for the um for the that kid, is for a the, small drone. Um, it's not a time for This was a prop as part of this is my topic, um or, or at least part of my interaction drones, with my family. Drone size. <laughs> I bought my dad. One he of dropped these. it in on the family. Uh, I bought my dad. Your family no, there's a new law that Joe is going to bring up. But I'm not even bringing up the law. I'm bringing up the conversation that I had with my family about the law. That's where we're going with this, not the law itself. Our audience knows the law is no, crap. They don't. <laughs> they don't know. The we law. have an they audience just came now. Out with some drone that's, laws. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Is that what it so, is? so I, I bought the, a drone like this for my dad and my uncle. That's right. Rich, you're missing out on the whole audience, right. man. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, tell us. Tell us. So I that. bought a drone like this for my dad, and then. My uncle brought up the fact that the federal government, the um, FAA, has decided that everyone should have to register any drone that's more than half a pound. And if you don't, like, it's, um, yeah, this one's not covered. Three ounces. But um, if you don't, they'll fine you, like, it's like tens of thousands of dollars under the civil law. And then they can prosecute you under the criminal law. And it's like a quarter million dollars plus jail time. 
for not registering your drone. And you know, and he said, and they're doing that for your safety. So, and this is where it got um, interesting as an anarchist. Joe, like, you have a drone. Come on. So, <laughs> um, so the conversation, we're sitting around a table like this, but it was, we, we didn't have drunk people in the background. But, um, your background. So your family. So we're talking about the family, and what, and what, pretty much nobody really was into the law itself, but what came up as part of the conversation was there was some discussion as to um, having the, there's already a private club that kind of manages um, these, these aircraft. Um, the and, FAA? No, no, the private club. Oh, never mind. There's a, it's like an aeronautics association or something like that for people with model aircraft. And you, you, you can already get um, insurance through them and, and um, well, all kinds is, of stuff. Are they even so, dangerous that the government needs to get involved? So yeah, so, yeah, so there's that too. But the, the <laughs> point, where are we wait until though, after the podcast. Where, um, it's not open yet. Where, so where the conversation in, finally ended up going was where, where I finally got to plant a little seed of anarchy was, you know, and I, I said, there's nothing that needs to be done that can't be done voluntarily better than, or by the free market, I said, but really voluntarily is what I meant, than by the force of the government. And it was just a perfect example to point that out because somebody else in the family brought up the fact that, hey, there's a private organization that could do this. That was like a bridge to me saying there's nothing that couldn't be done privately in a way that's better than what the government does. And, and then the, the conclusion around the table was that the, um, the government just wanted their cut. They wanted their money. Right now it's free. In about two weeks, it's going to be $5 to register. To register. And you have to do it every three years. And you can imagine where this is going. You're, you're going to buy a drone for... Fifty dollars off of Amazon. It's going to weigh more than half a pound, and you're going to have to pay like sixty-five dollars to register it. You know that's where it's going. Well, shipping is not necessarily inclusive of actual package weight. No, we're not. We're talking, talking about, about the drone that. itself we're plus the payload. So if you have a camera on it or whatever, <coughs> whatever is flying, if it's more than half a pound, you're supposed to register it now. So well, I, I guess mean, what you got to do is they're going to probably. Little do do arounds around the law where you can yeah. buy this 0.45 pound. <laughs> yeah, so that's the other and, thing. And add the camera happen. onto it. Yeah, what's yeah what's going to happen is there's going to be a market for drones that are like 0.54, 0.49, pounds. yeah. And uh, what's well, 0.55 pounds is what they're oh, allowed okay. to have. So it's going to be like 0.54 pound drones flying around so that people don't have to register them. Um, and it's not just drones. Like if you were if you had a model airplane for the last 25 years in your garage because you're a model airplaner, you have to register that thing. Too. Oh wow! Yeah, anything that fly, any unmanned aerial vehicle. Pretty much all the model airplanes yeah. are going to be. That's terrible. Yeah, and this is. I think that's uh, your typical example of government getting way involved and. Yeah. You know, putting their hooks into something that they probably don't need to. Well, I'm of the opinion that eventually, and it. This is kind of like a long-term, you know, 100, 200, 300, maybe a thousand years out. Um, privacy is not going to exist. Yeah, it didn't used to That's exist. What it privacy is a, um, modern it's a, it's a modern concept that came about when yeah, we became yeah. nuclear families. You were well, no, too, when no, there's any justice. privacy is a good thing, though, right? No, no, it's it, personal it, privacy. We're just, no, we're just, no, we're not being for or against privacy. We're no. just discussing the reality on the I ground. I mean, yeah, and, and more... Not that ancient times, people lived in a room about this size, so there could be someone over there fucking right now. Well, I'm just saying, it's, yeah, it's not it's a foregone conclusion. Do we the camera over there? I mean, <laughs> no, I think it actually is. I, I don't. I think that if we defend privacy, then it can be a possibility for our future. But well, it is under attack right now. I well, think privacy me, is well, important. Let me, let me, They're trying to put their hooks in, in our computers. Tap our phones. It's not even that. It's not even, I, I, I get all they're that. They're attacking us on no, but what, all angles. But from a market angle, from a market angle, when you want, let's say you want to buy a car, and um, the person or the, the manufacturer sits there and says, privacy laws apply to us, uh, we're not going to give you any details. Okay, fine. Caveat emptor. Fine. Who's going to buy that car? I wouldn't. Okay. 
by the same extension, by the same reasoning, if we apply that to uh, humans dating, for example, how much would you like to know of your possible future girlfriend in terms of like uh, sexual habits, uh, STDs, um, drug well, habits? Yeah, drug habits. How much would you like to know? It seems like you'd like to know as much as possible beforehand, yes. right? So, and let's say she wants to know that about you. Do you really think privacy can exist in that type of environment? Like I said, I think it's under attack, but I think that we have to be vigilant to protect it. I understand that, but then the implication is the more, I don't want to say secretive because I think it's a bad word, but the more hidden or reserved that it becomes, who's really going to want to go for that? I don't I think you do have a reasonable expectation that people will respect your privacy to some extent, and even if that were to become unpopular, I still I don't, don't think, think it would, would become unpopular. I, I think, I think that's a good <laughs> argument. I think that there are a lot of people out there. There's a strong demand for privacy in the market. And there's that, a strong uh, demand for privacy, but by the same every token... Every time there's a terrorist attack, we lose more of it. That's, but, but if you, that's if why, it, one of the main reasons it's under attack is why. from the government. But if you really think about it, the caveat emptor behavior in terms of a marketplace... Uh, companies that provide a service or a product that... Listen, if Bill well, only want to date a guy with everything public on Facebook where she can look up my whole history, I'm just not that guy. I'm not no, I don't about. disagree with you on that, but what, what, I, what I am asking or what I am theorizing here is that um, the more information you have, the better choices you can make, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, what really... Besides, like, here's the, this is the interesting thing I find about people. They want to hide all of their bad, and I say bad in a very broad sense, but they, don't, but they want to know everything of someone else. And to that end, I don't think... That's how government is. No, but it's not just government. I think at the individual level, we practice that. It's contradictory in behavior, but um, I think... It, it, I, don't, it, it I don't think it's contradictory. I don't think, I don't think it's universally true either, because I like a little bit of mystery, you know? I like it when some, something's you left like to You like mystery, but you, something's if left she's to that age, you'd like to know about her. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You don't want the mystery bits. That's, that's exactly. a little bit too much mystery. <laughs> HIV is more mystery than I want to get involved with. You're right. No. That's something you should disclose. But I think that you don't have to uh, completely sacrifice your privacy to... If anyone expects you to completely sacrifice your privacy, then that person's probably not for you. That's uh, that sounds like a controlling. But but by the same token, can you sit there and tell me that um, you're perfectly okay that um, you're? Let's say you're you want to date a girl, whoever, and she's completely shrouded in mystery. Are you perfectly okay with that? I view it as a challenge. That's how it was back in the 80s. Yeah. We were going up. I, I see it as a challenge, honestly. If I get to know her a little bit more and she stinks, then I'm going to be like, okay, you know, she just didn't want anyone to know that she was a terrible be. person. But if I get to know her more and, you know, but she's isn't that a waste of time? And, no, it, it depends. If, the, if I find, if, if there's breadcrumbs and every time I take another couple of steps, I find something I like, I'm going to keep going. If I keep finding things I don't like, I'm going to be like, turn around for run for the hills. She's hiding something terrible. But if I'm finding out more and more about stuff that I like, then, uh, you know, well, I think it's that nice for her to give a little bit of a chase. A generational thing. You being more the computer generation, you can go in and look up anything. We're the about. same age. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, he's talking about you guys. But me and me and being older, I mean, would never go and really even think that. I don't even Google that much. So this, so I this actually go brings that. up a topic that I did want to bring up, which is very closely related to this. Is this morning I changed my name on Facebook to remove my last name because I'm looking for work, so, and man. I post a lot about freedom on Facebook, and people don't understand freedom. So, what's going to happen is some HR person who's like 24 is going to be tasked, could be like an intern even, is going to be tasked with going on Facebook to look up about all the new candidates at whatever company it is that I apply for. And they're going to go on my Facebook and they're going to see something supporting freedom that they don't understand 
and immediately I'll get dismissed as a potential employee for the firm. So I called myself Joe Allen, that's my middle name. And with an I e also or an A at the end. With an E. And then Where's I also went into this is important too though. I went into <laughs> I went into the settings in Facebook and changed the URL too. So now when you Google my real name and that link comes up for um, that's on Google for the URL that it used to be, when you click on it it says page not found within a Facebook frame with the with the thumb. Well, hey, I think it's and, a good uh, idea. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, and it's not like I'm I'm hiding myself or whatever. No, but way to and, defend your privacy. Yeah, man. Um, people will you know if they really dig, they'll find who I am. But I'm not exposed to that HR girl or, or yeah. intern guy or whatever. We had a guy doing it. Well, company. it's too and, bad that you would have to hide something like that. There yeah, the problem is preference. now you're also hidden from anyone who's looking for you know who's an old high school friend. Those people something. already all found me. <laughs> probably. Yeah, You're probably. I've been right. on Facebook long enough. Everybody I know who I want to interact with has found me. I've got the opposite story. I just rebooted my yeah. old uh, Facebook after being strictly pseudonymous for uh, many years. Yeah. So I just, uh, it's been interesting. People uh, from my past getting home and like, I thought you were, I thought you died. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I think it's, I think. I preferred it when I was defending my privacy, when I was keeping all my uh, public information out I just, there. Yeah. Well, we couldn't even do this video the way you were before, because you wouldn't show your face on camera. I didn't like showing my face on camera. Well, as a libertarian yeah. just... person, I think you got to be out there. Yeah. Well, now that I'm running for Congress, I've decided to oh, shift gears. Show your face? Yep, to show my face. And to get public. You gotta get serious about it. Huh? That's right. Well, the real Jeff Wood, please stand up. Now I'm <laughs> too lazy to stand up, but. But you have to have a strong platform that people will appeal to the people, right? That's right. And my platform is available at jeffwoodforoffice.com. That's oh, good. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's a good start. So, Jeff, why do you think that it's. You was could a... get on the news or something, though, if you but, we know we, we tried to talk I'm about this subject to. with uh, James and uh, how's he feeling? Rich, <laughs> is he all right? I'm thinking he's in the pool. Rich <laughs> is asleep. Rich but is being very quiet. Make sure that right James isn't drowning out. <laughs> but why do you think that it is uh, okay to run for office? I mean, a lot of anarchists would say that's a sellout. No, I mean, I'm not selling out. I haven't taken any money, so... But you would. No, not the oh, yeah, money type of sell, sell out. The other, you know, kind of... That's just the man. Out the, the, Nobody's offered you any money. Let's be running, clear on this. I'm running on a platform of completely eliminating the federal government. So, how is that? Local? Well, that's not really in my purview as a federal candidate, but when I ran for state government two years ago, I was in favor of... State destroying government. the state government, exactly. There's a lot of programs you could cut, though. You could argue those programs. Absolutely, and I think we should cut all of those programs and more, including all of the programs. <laughs> which, which programs would you, which not ones cut? Would you not cut? There are no programs I would not cut. My first thing as, what about the as a congressman is I would. What about children? Do you hate system? children? I would propose a bill eliminating the entirety of our compiled federal law system. Get rid of it completely. So you then, hate children, then? I don't think that it's the federal government's responsibility to take care of children. Whose responsibility is it? What about education? I think education is important, and I think it's something that the parents and the children themselves should concern themselves with. What about with. schools? I think schools be funded? have in the past been a useful model for education, but what with the decentralization of information brought about by the Internet, schools are more and more uh, an anachronism. They're a thing of the past. The idea of getting children together into one central location to learn will be laughed at by the end of the 21st century. So you're for education but against schools? That's right. Couldn't have said it better myself. We gotta get Jock on. Uh, Who? Jock uh, Best. He's. There used to be a, a guy named O'Brien, I forget his first name, who did a. <clears throat> he was a strong libertarian, he was in the party, did a. Uh, 
thing on public, uh, Detroit Thank Public you. Radio, uh, either once a month or once a week, his last name was O'Brien. You talking about Tim O'Brien? I think it was Tim O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. I, I know Tim O'Brien. I met Tim O'Brien like a year and a half ago. He's the guy who ran uh, John Coon's campaign. Oh, really? Back uh, when he ran for Libertarian uh, what about him, Senate Mark? in 94. Well, I mean, he's one of the guys that are out there I listen to. I had a teacher who was his brother, and he made us listen to uh, like an hour's worth of his radio broadcast. And uh, I think we met him too. We might might have met him at the, at the class, but he was a really strong, and he had, had everybody's ear. He was, I think, he was turning heads, getting people interested. Yeah, he, Tim's a good guy. I'm friends with him on Facebook. I can look up. We can see if it's the same guy. It's got to be him. Yeah, it's probably not compelling radio. Well, so actually, why do you well, think uh, it's wrong for a, an anarchist to be involved in politics, or do you think it's wrong? I think it's wrong. I think it legitimizes the point of politics. You know, my, I think there's a slippery slope between, you know, if you're like a normal person, you, you vote for the lesser two evils, or you think that the Republicans serve my interest, or the Democrats serve my interest. You know, Well, but I think when you get, you know, yeah, you can get to where Jeff is, which I can't disagree with him, but like I said, I think it's a very slippery slope. Where do you go? Well, what is the lesser of two evils? Rand Paul? I think he's pretty fucking evil. I, I have a contention with all that argument is that there are laws within um, the government that regulate politi uh, political behavior. Right. Um, you can't, for example, filibuster just because you feel like it. You have to actually sign yeah, and fill out regu rules. regulations and paperwork. And to that end, I find the whole process invalid because you are still submitting yourself to um, this notion that you are under control. Um, even if you run as an anarchist, you are still under the control and the regulations. You're still supporting the system. Y yeah, y y it's just basic hip hypocrisy where, um, but well, I I'm going to filibuster as long as I fill out the paperwork. But I disagree. Well, I think that there are good anarchist candidates who are turning what you're saying on their head. Daryl Perry, who's running for president, like we were talking about earlier, it may get cut out, but uh, he's running on a platform where he's not at all participating with the Federal Election Committee. But he's, he's not reporting not his finances, he's not filling out any of the paperwork, and he's telling them the only paperwork he has, sent, he has put out is an open letter telling them that he rejects their authority over his campaign. And how long is this campaign going to last? And it will, do you really think... He's the person I'm supporting for president at this That's point. fine, and that's great. But what I'm asking is, um, he's, he, he's made all these claims. But do, the, the election process is not going to support him, right? Correct. I don't then what so. the fuck is the point? To stand in protest. To you object can, publicly that's why the to the process. Have a foothold, no, 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 no. They have a basis. You know, I used in. to for quite a few years. I used to vote, if at all, I would vote pretty much libertarian, because, as a protest vote. You know, awesome. Years ago, I voted, you know, for a couple presidents, thinking they were the lesser of two evils, and then I was like, well, that's just the lesser of two evils. So I would just vote Republican, or I'm sorry. Libertarian for a, for a protest vote, but I don't know. I think you want that's, some All right. I don't know if that's the right way to go. I, I just because I think that if you is, research and find a libertarian candidate who comes close to your views, then it is worthwhile to support them. Just to just to help spread well, the message. Even then, the problem with that is, what about their actions post? Let's say post election. What? Who is to say that they will follow through? Nobody. If they get elected or if they don't get elected? If they get elected. Well, if well, they get elected. Well, that, I think when you're talking about libertarian candidates, is a bit of a stretch at this point. But if they, I, I mean, what, what's your question? What, what do you well, if you got elected that? and you started getting that 200 grand a year, and then you started having, you know, people offering you money to support you, and to support their cause, and you're gonna lose your you don't, seat if you don't support. You're not a rich man, and yeah. that 
I don't care who the fuck I you are. Think... That stuff is very intoxicating. Mm -hmm. All right. First and we of all, know that you like to be intoxicated. I, <laughs> I do. I do. Well, first of all, if somebody I, starts I, throwing I, drugs, money, and pussy at I you, you may a, be corruptible. I think it's <laughs> ridiculous, honestly, at this point, to think that I might win a first term. No, but why and are you if I did win a first term, I think that at that point I would treat it with the same amount of seriousness that it was ridiculous that I would win a second I term. I think you should just... Admit that. Well, there's everyone a good thought chance was, I'm going to sell out if somebody offers me. I'm well, not no, no, but sell here's, out. The, here's, the, here's the thing. It, a lot of people thought it was ridiculous that a, a black 35 year old would win. A lot of people thought it was ridiculous that uh, Donald Trump might win. But guess what? Here they are. So, to that end, I, I am curious um, the anarchist that is running for government, he may actually win. But then my question becomes, if he does win, will he follow through? And, by the way, can he follow through? Because there are legal implications if he doesn't. I'll tell you exactly what I'll do. If I am elected, I will propose a bill eliminating you're all gonna, of the government. You're going to propose a bill. If that bill fails, which it probably will in our current... No, it absolutely plan, fucking will. This, this is the same argument as I absolutely won't fucking win. But you're right. If, if it were to pass, then good. Then I would move on to proposing a constitutional amendment. Getting rid of Why would you all want the Constitution if you're of, going to propose to get rid of the of getting, of the getting rid of all three branches of government. Then the next constitutional amendment would be abrogating and getting what? rid of the Constitution itself. But then we wouldn't be have a federal government anymore, so I would pursue office at the state level. But, I mean, if I don't get any of these things passed, which I probably won't, you're right, even if I do get elected, I won't have the votes to get rid of the federal government. So I will do a lot like Ron Paul did, and I will put my brick on the no button and vote against every... But bill he that comes across my, my desk. I will vote against every bill that comes across my desk that involves well, okay. spending government money you're, you're or basically, raising taxes on the American people. But what you're basically saying is, I'm going to maintain a limp dick the entire time. <laughs> no, I'm well, going to no, do whatever what, what, okay. I can. You really think, you really think, you really think, you really I'm going to do whatever <laughs> I can. You really think your vote, even yeah. if you got... Yeah. No, it's not gonna matter. He doesn't think that. That's so four hundred and thirty five people. I don't think that yeah. I will be able to eliminate the government even then if what's I get the elected. Fucking point? It's an education. Because campaign. I will be campaign. able to spread the message. So you want to be Ron Paul three. Of, exactly. No, I, I'll be no, I don't want to be Ron Paul three because he wasn't nearly as radical as me. He, he hasn't be. publicly called for the end of the federal government. I do. If we can get someone like that into office, or even getting a large enough vote total that they're a serious contender for office, then we could really shake up our current political system and send a message to the people in Lansing and in Washington that we're coming for them, that we know what's going on, and that we're taking it seriously, and we want to end the system as we know it. And um, I, I find that interesting. I really do. But when I look at uh, what happened in Spain when the Spanish anarchists entered the government, they still remain a large component of the Spanish government, and nothing has really been achieved by them. Um, I'm not saying they make up a majority. I, I don't think they do, but uh, it seems to me these proposed anarchists, or the Spanish anarchists, they still follow the rules within the governing... You could follow the rules and vote no on every bill. You know, and and advocate. Um, but that's fine. For Anna. But it, it, it's completely ineffective. And my point is, talk is cheap. You can inspire people, and that's great. I have no problem with that. But talk, you know, just whispering words. Talk is so cheap. Then why have governments throughout all of history murdered people for talking? Why are they so jealous of the voice? They're jealous of the voice because the voice, it's threatening. It's not, it's not like anything that I say is actually costing me anything other than, theoretically, a job, honestly. Unless I'm starting to threaten people. The moment I start to threaten people, then the government's going to come on my ass. Wow, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
We need an artist for this show. Oh, draw a picture. That, that's going on the blooper reel right there. That is classic. No, but you, you, understand my, you understand my point. That the government will come after me because... I have because sensed, you came first. I have said something that is so hostile. Right. But you have to understand, the reason government exists is because people believe it should exist. And the reason people believe it should exist is because for two, for 6,000 years, the government has controlled the message. And this is why we do this show. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's 6,000 years. I'd say it's much longer than that. I would argue, right. I would, no, no, I, I would, no. It's irrelevant. It could be 10,000. I don't no, care. No, 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 you're dismissing what I have to say. And what I have to say is that the thing is authoritarianism comes from uh, parents. Yes. And that's what I consider a very... It doesn't just come from parents, though. The public school system is a very I'm not talking powerful... about public. I'm, I'm not even talking about no, that. I There's... agree with you about it coming from the parents, but it comes from a lot of different areas, and a huge area... That just went off. Well, it's pointed at them, anyway. Um, a huge area of it is the public school system, and the media, and... Just, just you know, you go to a, a football game, and everybody, you know, stands and puts their hand on their heart, faces the flag, and they sing a merry song. Um, all of this put together is why the government can exist. It's um, yes, the government will violently beat down anyone who can get through all of that and not be subservient to the state. But everybody knows if. If nobody be, became propagandized and became like a little drone to the state, the state couldn't possibly exist because there's so, I mean, there's just a few of them and then there's all of us. I mean, it would fall in a second if everybody believed in anarchy. The, if 30% if of the population became true anarchists, I don't think the it state would, take that it wouldn't take that many, but I'm just making a point. No, I, I, this the is, state would fall overnight, and you wouldn't even take a violent revolution. It would just be done. Well, I, this is the thing I, I was, when I heard uh, Jeff and um, Rich discussing, um, I would argue that the Founding Fathers weren't, um, I wouldn't say they were libertarians per se, but they were very libertarian-esque. Um, I, I really do feel bad about Jefferson, because Jefferson, he bordered, like, the line of anarchy and some of the shit he says. Like, he really did, but he, yeah, he... Jefferson's always been my favorite historical... He's, he's kind of twisted with Jefferson, because he had all those slaves and... Yeah, uh, and no, I, I don't... You're, just... you're born into a, an era where you have slaves, I don't necessarily think he... Something, some people would say well, he's anti-slavery. I mean, some people say he's... The problem with him and the slaves... Is other people from that era who were anti-slavery got rid of their slaves, but he was so bad with his finances that he actually did the worst possible thing for his slaves that could be done. And when he was died, they were all sold off to the highest oh, really? bidder and were sent off in all different directions. And back then, you know, they didn't have a phone; they weren't allowed to well, write because they. Um, that's why I think. And so when they got separated, they lost. It, it, it was as if their family members and friends and loved ones just died because they never got to see them again well, that's, their whole life. That's kind of my point about the political process. It's, it's kind of like, what do you do if you're born into a, a system of slavery and you own slaves from birth? Do you sell them? Do you free them? Yeah, what if you were born a prince? To, uh, the, what if you no, were born as the crown prince? But yeah, but just, uh, let's, <laughs> and you're, you're an let's anarchist do uh, slavery. Do you do... do do you free them? What if you can't afford to free them? What if, you, yeah. if that'll crush you financially? Do you just treat them really well? Do you fuck them and have babies with them? I mean, you know, it's the same slippery slope with politics. Do you yeah. do you vote? Do you choose the lesser of two evils? And I can't argue with uh, Jeff's point of his pol political ambitions being the, uh, an educational I mean, basically, his whole point is it's for educational purposes to bring people to anarchy, and I think that is a very valid point. And I, 
I literally support him in that. Yeah. But I, I think it's a slippery it slope because if by some miracle he does get elected, you know, let's face it, Jeff's not a rich man. I mean, hopefully right. he'll he'll appoint all of us. He'll become then, a rich man the moment he gets elected. Yeah, but how do you fight? I mean, you know, they say that uh, you know <coughs> power corrupts and ultimate power corrupts ultimately. Yeah. And, uh, right. oh. That's pretty. That's a lot of power, a lot of money, a lot of things to. To turn down, so definitely. I think uh, my Chris, fucking seat. Chris Rock said it best. No, 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 stay there. Calm down, dude. dude. Don't freak around, I think, dude. I think Chris Rock said it best. He goes, A man's as faithful as his options. Yeah, and that that's what would concern me when uh, yeah. when our congressman becomes elected. But yeah, on I the mean, plus side, my god, I better be a fucking what? advisor. I want I want some of that free health insurance and all that other good shit. <laughs> I think on that note, we've we've got a wrap. All right. I think episode five. Is, I'll drop a beat. Is is, uh, a beat. is wrapped up. It's, this is going to be an interesting episode to edit. Um, we had some crazy stuff happen here, and um, <laughs> did anybody find James? Because he's missing. Uh, what? Yeah, James what? is missing. Let's let's explain what happened before we wrapped up. No, let's this, find James. This this beer, is oh. the beer in this this growler here was fifteen percent alcohol. Where is James? Hey, Jeff and I are smart enough to not open this before yeah. the show. Yeah. And people got drunk is he okay? than they ever expected to. We're trying to wrap up a Dude, show and you're talking. just stop. Dude, fuck James. I think somebody Jeff. being missing is more important than the show. Right, you go I, look and I'll wrap up the show. Wait, like does anyone I'm have any teasing? Where's the last place he was seen? Go outside and look for him. I told you when you went out there to look for him. But I, I went out there to smoke a joint. Shh. Jesus Christ. Look at him, he's laughing at his sleep. <sighs> Okay. Go outside. Right. It's a wrap. So I think it's about time we wrap up this show. Um, we we had an interesting time recording this show. Um, the the beer and the one growler had a fifteen percent alcohol content. This is the exact which, same um, beer. They were both from Brewery Becker. Oh wow. And I think it hit people a little bit faster than they expected. So I'm going to have a fun time editing this. I think I'll throw some bloopers in, and you're going to see multiple cuts. Um, Throughout the show, um. <laughs> you find him. So this this one. We're not work. responsible for James. <laughs> and on that note, we'll see you next week. <laughs> Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Which we'll oh, up. and uh, by the way, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, token. Um, we tried to say this earlier. Yes. About yourself. Oh, whatever. Without a ruler, fuck your candidate, 2016. I think. Uh, um, We'll Dane Whalen runs the Facebook website where you can order this shit from. We'll put it in the show notes. By the uh, way, I want to say something about our show notes right before we cut off. Not this episode, but most of our episodes, our show notes are enough to carry you through the entire week full of um, materials for, for learning anarchy and um, reading about philosophy and, and current events and, and what's going on in the movement. I've had pretty extensive, um, our guests have brought up so many different great reads, yes, from blog posts to books to um, YouTube videos, I put all that stuff in the show notes, so get on over to um, freedomtalkmedia.com. <laughs> he doesn't even know it's so it's hard. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and check out the show notes for every page. Um, and, and then one more note. I think at least the three of us, the regulars on the, on the Anarchy Roundtable, we, we agree, agree with, with this statement. With this Fuck segment. your candidate. We love Jeff, but <laughs> we are not. I don't know. I'll endorse him for Congress. Fuck Woo! <laughs> but, <laughs> but we are not endorsing the political process. We think it's. No! I think it's probably Ooh. wrong. What do you think, Danny? I think it's horribly wrong. All right, let's take it to the process. What do you think about the political process? Do you think? I mean, I, I mean, uh, you're a little mixed on it. I'm a little mixed. I can see. What do you think? Will you will you go so far as to endorse Jeff or? I won't endorse any candidate. No. The political process is bad. I agree. All right, all right. All right. Let's let's get Katie on the ukulele. <laughs> what? Come on, Katie, get over here. <laughs> what? She's closing out all our shows with the ukulele. Oh. Where is she? Yeah, you turn it on.